Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you about um, a trend I'm seeing among my coaching clients that I'm noticing is kind of an overall trend happening among a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And that is an, an increase in social anxiety. Like so many of my clients are, are saying things like, I'm overthinking everything I'm saying when I go into social, social situations, like I'm avoiding social situations, I'm dreading getting together with people, like I, I, I think too much about what I'm going to say, I'm worried what people are thinking of me, and just having all kinds of anxiety that maybe they did have a little bit before, but they're noticing right now it's especially intense and it's really creating a lot of suffering and a lot of confusion and people are really struggling. And I have noticed a few things and I wanted to share them here because for one, you're not, if you are struggling with this, you're not alone. There are a lot of people experiencing this. And two, I wanted to break down a little bit of what might be happening for you to help you normalize it, to help you understand what's going on in your brain and to give you some tools to cope. So what is anxiety, right? Anxiety is, is your brain's way of trying to keep you safe. It's actually a really healthy function of a human brain. Anxiety serves you on some level to help you survive the world. Anxiety shows up when there is a threat of danger and its, it's intention is to show you all the potential ways you might die or, or be caused pain and warn you. And it warns you by like giving you that anxious feeling and giving you, you know, you, you start having all the thoughts. Like you feel like there's danger, you feel it in your body and then your mind goes to work, where's the danger? It must be this, it must be that. People are gonna think I'm this. People are going to um, think, I don't know what I'm talking, you know, whatever the fears are because when it comes to a social environment, you are wired to belong, to adapt, to be accepted, to connect. That is your survival instinct, is to belong to the tribe. So when you're feeling anxiety in a social situation, step one, like first thing to know is that it's normal and it's valid and nothing's gone wrong. One of the main things we see with um, people struggling with anxiety is it's this resistance to the anxiety. It's judging the anxiety. It's trying to push away the anxiety. It's, it's hating the anxiety is like pouring gas on a fire. Like it just makes the anxiety increase and get so much worse because you're not only feeling anxious about something out there, you're now judging and feeling anxious about who you are as a person. Like, what is wrong with me that I feel this way? So it just increases those feelings of something is wrong. So the first step is just to normalize it. Like, okay, I am experiencing anxiety. My, my nervous system, my brain, something in me thinks there is a threat to my well-being, to my safety, to my family's well-being to my reputation, right? To my something. Something feels threatened. That's why anxiety is here. And so just noticing that and loving your brain for being a healthy functioning brain, not judging yourself, just getting really curious. Like, okay, what, what am I feeling threatened about? Like what, what, where do I believe the danger is? And here's why I think social anxiety has increased there's two reasons. One is, think back to two years ago, March 2020, if you're in the States, right? Just around this time. We went from social gatherings being positive, being life-giving, being fun, to now, all of a sudden, being in a social situation is the most dangerous thing you can do. Even socializing with people you're intimate with and know, well, your close friend groups, all of a sudden, that's dangerous. If you go socialize, you might die <laughs> from a, a, a new disease 
that we don't know anything about. And you might die, and if you don't die, you might spread it to someone who will die. And the world's gonna end. Like, it was a very real threat to your safety and your well-being, and to the safety and well-being of the people that you love. So social gatherings became life-threatening. So your brain, even though you know now, like, okay, there's some safety here, it's not as threatening. I can, I'm vaccinated. I, I'm, I'm hanging out with people who are vaccinated. Like, it's okay. There is still a threat to your safety. So you're thinking about gathering socially. Your brain's like, wait, that's dangerous, right? We're not supposed to do that. We're gonna, you might die. And you feel anxious. But then you feel anxiety and your logical mind is like, well, it's not about COVID because I know I'm fine with COVID. But your, your nervous system doesn't know that yet. So your brain starts trying to figure out why are you so anxious? It must be because you're so scared of your friends judging you or you forgot how to socialize. You forgot how to carry on a conversation. Like you're going to forget what to say. So all of these thoughts start coming to just like explain the anxiety and feed the anxiety so that you don't go somewhere and put your life in danger. So breaking it down to like knowing what's happening in your body can be really, really helpful. Like, oh, I'm just anxious because for a year, almost two years, being social was not something that was safe. So it's, it's allowing your brain to ease back into okay, I'm feeling unsafe. My brain's just being normal, just breathing. And like all your nervous system needs to know to calm down, to, to, to move through anxiety is that you're safe. Like you can't solve anxiety with your thoughts. Once you've clicked into anxiety, once anxiety is activated in your body, you cannot think rationally. You can't think your way out of anxiety. The more you think, and try to try to logic and rationalize your brain will just give you other your brain will just fight back and it, well if it's not this then you should be worried about this you've gained 10 pounds people are gonna this like it will just continue to feed that anxiety loop so the only way to respond is to recognize that you're anxious love yourself in it <laughs> just like you would a small child who's scared. You wouldn't lambaste a small child who's scared and be like, you idiot, everything's fine. Get over it. That's what we do to ourselves, right? You would, it's okay. Like you're just feeling anxious. That's okay. Everything's okay. You're safe. You are safe. Deep breath. Inhale, deep exhale. That deep exhale calms your nervous system. That's step one. Just don't resist the anxiety. Don't judge it. Understand that its function is there to keep you safe. Just breathe through it. Just notice all of those crazy anxious thoughts. It's just your brain being an anxious brain. Just notice those thoughts. Yeah, I think everyone's going to judge me. Yeah, I forgot how to have a conversation. Yeah, I hate being in social gatherings. Yeah, I feel claustrophobic. Like all the things. <sighs> normal in this day and age to have some anxiety about social situations with shootings with pandemics with all these things of course your brain is going to think it's dangerous the same way your brain thinks it's dangerous to get on an airplane that's a smart fear right getting on an airplane has a potential threat to your safety but we know but we've been do we can do it like we do it still because we know for the most part we're going to be fine. We are more than likely going to survive. So we notice the anxiety, but we get on the airplane anyways because we want to go to where we're going. We want to have the vacation. We want to visit the family. We want to go on the work trip. Like we notice the anxiety. It's a normal anxiety. It's perfectly normal to be scared of being thousands of feet up in the air. <laughs> but we just recognize it as anxiety and we don't make it a problem. We just get on the plane anyways. It's the same with social situations right now. Yes, brain, you're right. There are potential threats, but 
It's more important to me to connect. It's more important to me to have a thriving life with a community. It's more important for me to stay close to my friends. It's more important to me to have quality time with my, my family. It's more important to me to like nourish myself with live music or, you know, sunshine or whatever it is. Like, yes, anxiety is normal, but it's also going to be okay. Most likely, like all of life. I mean, we, we put ourselves at risk every single day, right? Like anxiety, we're always managing, managing anxiety. We just, in some scenarios, we're just really used to it. It, and now we're just needing to be gentle with our brains because it's been wired in the, over the past two years that being social is dangerous. So we just need to ease our brain back into, yes, it was dangerous. Thank you for keeping me safe by keeping me quarantined, keeping me, you know, making smart decisions for that safety and health of others. And now we're, we're in a space where it's not as dangerous. So just rewiring your brain that it's safe. That's all it needs to know. I'm safe. I'm safe. That's the first most important that I, I think I'm seeing happening. Like, I think this is what's happening. I think this is why social anxiety is just like on the rise. Second reason is because we really have forgotten that there's a skill in socializing. There's skill in having conversation. There's skill in relating to people. And we've been out of practice. We've been really out of practice. So anytime you're going into a situation where you haven't used those muscles in a while, where it's uncertain if you're gonna be okay, and where things feel a little unknown, also you're going to feel a lot of anxiety. Your brain hates the unknown, it hates uncertainty. Your brain is not sure you remember how to carry on a normal conversation with a human. It is a social, it is a skill that we took for granted because we were doing it all the time. So we felt really competent and confident in socializing. But we're out of practice. And so of course, you're going to have some uncertainty. Like, do I remember how to do this? I remember the first time I went snowboarding after having not snowboarded for 10 years. I used to snowboard every day, every, you know, multiple times a week. I lived in a ski town and snowboarding was my life and I loved it. And then I moved away and I didn't snowboard for like 10 or 12 years. And I had the opportunity to go again and I was riddled with anxiety. I'm not going to remember how to do this. I'm going to fall. I'm going to make a fool of myself. It's going to be painful for me to like not know when I used to be so good at it, like all the, all the fears. But once I got on the snowboard, got off the lift, hit the mountain, it all came back to me. All my anxiety went away. You know, it took a little bit to get my, like my muscles right and my posture right and like remember. But once I did, I was like, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing. Like it all came back to me. What if I'd let anxiety keep me from getting back on the mountain, right? Or if I made it this huge deal, like I better get lessons again and I better like, you know, take it slow and I better, you know, ease my way back in. Like you can do that. We can do that. Obviously, if that's the nicest thing to your nervous system, you can do that. But for me, just being with the anxiety, allowing it to be there and doing it anyways, once I realized, oh, <laughs> I got this. I know how to do this. Duh. All the anxiety went away. So it's the same with socializing. I worked with a client who she had a lot of anxiety having to go to this, this big work social event. She's in sales. Like she, she does social for a living, but she hadn't been with work colleagues like this in over two years. And she was like beating the crap out of herself because she's like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like I used to be so social. It used to be so easy to be with people, to hang out with people, to have conversations. I used to know what to talk about. And we really worked through her anxiety. We broke it down, gave her breathing techniques, showed her how to calm her brain. She went to the, the gathering. We resourced from, you know, when you're with your family, are you able to have a conversation? Yes, you can have conversations. When you're not, you know, when you're being you, when you're fully you, you know how to have a conversation. Of course you do. We eased her brain. We eased her nervous system. She went 
feeling anxious because we accepted, I helped her accept the fact that, yeah, anxiety is going to be here until I do this and see that it's safe. So once she, she reported back, like I, it was, it was totally fine. It was totally fine. I went, I realized like people are not like, I'm not that important to them that they're thinking the entire time about what an idiot I am. Like they don't care that much about me, which for her was like this huge breakthrough, which is, I loved it. I love that. Yes. The answer to her anxiety was like, people don't actually care as much about you as you think they do. <laughs> they're a little more interested in what you think of them most likely. So, but she went and she was, she came back just like lit up, like, okay, I'm not broken. I'm not broken. I just, I just needed to get in there, get my feet wet again. And her brain relaxed and realized, oh yeah, this is safe. You got this. So I hope this is helpful. If you are experiencing an increase in social anxiety right now, if, if the, the upcoming things you have, weddings, events, things that you haven't done in a while. And I know we have been socializing for a few months, so this may be a little late for some of you, but I think there are people who are still really struggling with the anxiety and not just with the anxiety, but what they're making the anxiety mean about themselves. They're making the anxiety mean that something's wrong with them, that they're crazy and that they don't know how to socialize and that they don't know how to com have conversations and that they're insecure and that they don't have any confidence. No, 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 no. All that's happening is you're experiencing anxiety for a very good reason. And we just need to help your brain realize that it's, it's safe again. It's safe. It's safe to take the action you want to take with the anxiety. And once you do, the anxiety is going to calm back down. It may take a few times, but the less you judge yourself and the less you let anxiety stop you, from taking action, the more you respond to the anxiety by like, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not, I'm not doing it. You just feed that anxiety. You, you affirm that anxiety, that anxiety is okay, good. I kept you safe. You needed to stay home. Let's keep that up. Right? Like you have to accept, love yourself in the anxiety and then take the action anyways, because the action is going to be what reprograms your brain to let it know that you're safe that it's not a problem. I hope this helps. I really do. I really do because we thrive in community. When we are isolated and disconnected, depression, like increased anxiety, sadness, all of those things start like start to feed, right? Connecting with human beings, connecting with others is elemental to your thriving. Right? Like you need it. We need it. We need community. We need social connection. We need human interaction. We need it. So really, really be gentle with yourself within this anxiety. It's normal. You're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. You have a very healthy human brain. Let's get you back out there. And if you need help, let me know. I love you guys. I hope this is helpful. Go have fun. Bye.